Well, here's Rob Ely, and he'll tell you what we're doing. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we'll we'll see if you enjoy. Um, <clears throat> I'll see if my dog joins in because she suddenly needs to go out, but we'll deal with her in a moment. Uh, the hymn of the month is Praise, Praise, Praise the Lord. It's a Cameroonian song, and uh, it's been in my head all week because it's very simple and straightforward. Janet said, why don't you tell him some stuff about the hymn? You're, you do that. You're good at that. And I don't have much to tell you about the hymn. Okay, she really needs to go at that, so hang on a second here. All right. She doesn't like my music, so. Um, this, uh, you know, this is not a hymn that has a lot of kind of intricate theological principles, like most of the African hymns that we have in our hymnal. It's a pretty straightforward song with one idea in it, but you repeat it a bunch of times because the, the idea is to get it to go from something you know in your head to something you feel in your body. So. Try it with me. If you have something that makes rhythm, um, I have some uh, an instrument here called my hands that I'm going to use. And uh, the other thing to know about this song is that there's harmony parts that are really easy to sing along with <clears throat> if you feel like it. So about halfway through, I'm going to start singing weird things, harmony things, and you can just do what I'm doing or you can do what you were doing before and have a, a moment of harmony. So it goes like this. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Praise God's holy name. Alleluia. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Praise God's holy name. Alleluia. 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 Not too bad, right? So join with me because we're new to a handful of times. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Praise God's holy name. Alleluia. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Praise God's holy name. Alleluia. 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 Praise. Praise, praise the Lord, praise God's holy name, alleluia. Praise, praise, praise the Lord, praise God's holy name, alleluia. 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 Praise, praise. Praise the Lord, praise God's holy name, alleluia. Praise, praise, praise the Lord, praise God's holy name, alleluia. 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 Praise God's holy name, one more time now, praise, praise. Praise the Lord, praise God's holy name, alleluia. Praise, praise, praise the Lord, praise God's holy name, alleluia. 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 Now sing it all week like I've been doing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Are we going to enjoy some more music from Rob later this morning? Not that I know of, but you know, okay. if you need anything else, you just let me know. Okay. That was really, <laughs> really fun. Thank you. So we'll turn to our bulletin. On the cover of your bulletin is a picture. And in the picture, you notice a woman who has a lamp and the fire is coming out of what you might think is the, the teapot pouring spout, but it's a lamp spout. And she's getting ready to go into the bridegroom's feast, the bride's feast, the feast of the marriage or the marriage feast. And 
Down below her, you see another person who's just taken a nap and they're not too worried about the bridegroom coming. So it says in the introduction, today, the prophet Amos calls for justice to roll down like waters. <clears throat> Paul urges us to encourage one another with the promised coming of the Lord. Jesus tells the parable of the wise and foolish bridesmaids. Surrounded by the faithful of every time and place, we celebrate Christ's coming in our midst in the word of life and the feast of victory, the marriage feast of the Lamb. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with each of you in your homes and in your lives, blessing you. Peace be with you and also with you. <clears throat> we continue with the invocation. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Join me in the hymn of praise, reminding you that these words not only come from the announcement to the shepherds at the birth of Christ, but then the following words come from the book of Revelation, where John is imagining the throne of God and what, we will, what it will be like in that heavenly feast. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others 
Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts and minds as we hear God's word. I noticed that uh, both the Roberts family and, and, uh, and me are listed as readers today. So Roberts family, what are you planning to read? <laughs> We're doing the prayers is what Monica sent me. So everything else is yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll begin with Amos anyway. <laughs> that works. <laughs> Is that okay? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the uh, first reading from this morning is this very powerful one from the prophet Amos, uh, chapter 5, verses 18 through 24. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light. As if someone fled from a lion but was met by a bear. I went to the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. <laughs> Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. And... Um, the second reading is, is, is uh, Psalm 70. If you have your Bible or your, the bulletin with you, we can all read it together. Uh, and, um, and so this uh, Psalm 70 is to the leader of David for the memorial offering. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those be put to shame and confusion who seek my life. Let those be turned back and brought to, to dishonor who desire to hurt me. Let those who say, aha, aha, turn back because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. For I am poor and needy. Hasten to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. O Lord, do not delay. And uh, the New Testament reading for today is from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 4, verses uh, 13 through 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others, as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means proceed those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a, great, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds, together with them, to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. 
Word of God, Word of Life. Thank you, God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took glass of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went, uh, went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But the Lord replied, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The gospel of the Lord. Praise Thank to you, you O Christ. Christ. This is one of those lessons at the end of Matthew's book at the end of our church year that gives us some consternation. This last week at our tech study Bible study, a couple of us sat there scratching our heads saying, why does Jesus get so harsh? We wondered. It does sound rather severe. To help us understand the context, hear a couple of little stories. A young child hears that the circus has come to town and the child is jumping and leaping around the front room, breathless with excitement, begging the parents to take him right down to where that circus is being displayed and buy tickets right now. Don't wait, the little child says, let's go, it's the circus. Two days before my grandson and his family went camping, he had in his bedroom his little child tent, it's only an indoor tent, set up with his sleeping bag in the tent. And for two days before they left on their summer camping trip, he was sleeping in his little sleeping bag, in his little tent, in his little bedroom. And when they got to the campground, he again set up his little tent inside the big tent and inside the little tent was his sleeping bag. Oh, he couldn't wait. He couldn't wait to go camping. Let's start camping two days early, sleepless the night before, filled with anticipation. Sometimes as adults, we don't understand that anticipation. Vacations, oh, they come and go every year. A circus, they'll never be sold out. We'll get them the day of. There's no chance of a sellout. We have plenty of time for tomorrow. We have plenty of time because tomorrow will always be there, right? Maybe not. I talked to a woman recently who, having dropped her husband off at the Spokane airport, made the routine, routine trip home, only to be involved in a big automobile accident. Fortunately, she was not hurt, badly anyway, and the heart, I mean, and the car was totaled. She said, it's always a bit frightening to realize how fragile life is. One moment, you're moving along fine in the traffic when then bang, out of nowhere, everything changes. Last year, one of my best friends, a clergy who went through seminary with me, known him a long time, died suddenly of a heart attack. You might say he died unexpectedly. Well, he had a heart condition and 
he did smoke occasionally. He was a few pounds overweight. So I asked myself, when will I learn to stop using that curious expression, he died unexpectedly. We are mortal. We're creatures. One of the members of our congregation who is taking a pill for cancer said to me, I asked him, I said, so how are you doing with the pills? And he said, I take them regularly on schedule every day. And he leaned in and said to me, you know, pastor, I'm terminal. Our lives are like that. I thought to myself, our lives are not destined to go on forever, except he just knows that. There's something about us as human beings where we want to think that our lives are like a continually flowing river that goes on and on and on. We don't like to think about our lives as having a beginning and an ending. We think our opportunities will always be coming our way. We like to think as human beings, there are moments that occur that are gonna occur again but then something intrudes. Is it death or is it God? Intrudes in a momentary moment. We must be ready for it, is what this says in this parable. Is that the message, the only message we take from this parable, is that we have mortality? Jesus says in this parable that there are 10 bridesmaids five of whom are wise and five of whom are foolish. Now for me, the wise are the ones that understand the oil, that understand the light, that understand that the light is God's word, that understand that the oil that is poured over our heads at baptism like water is grace, is forgiveness, is God's word. The wise understand that light and that word and that oil as grace. They understand that the light is Jesus Christ and the gift of resurrection. But then there's those five who are foolish. Five of them ended up on the inside for the wedding feast, which is a Matthew term for the coming again of Christ. The wedding feast, which has no end, Matthew says. And five ended up on the outside knocking on the door. Jesus at the end of the parable says, keep awake, keep watch, which I think means notice the oil in your life, which is Christ, the grace, the resurrection. Keep watch, notice the light, the word in your life. Now in the first century, a wedding was a many day ordeal. The groom possibly could be from the same village, but I'd like to play with it by saying the groom is from a separate village and the bride is living in a neighboring village. The groom has received this woman as his fiance and the groom then has a task to go back to his village to meet with the elders, the Jewish elders of his village and be quizzed and be washed and be dressed and learn rituals for the family that he will lead and to teach and to learn from the elders all the responsibilities of being a husband, a father, and taking care of his bride. He will not be able to retrieve this new bride and begin the wedding feast until he understands everything from the husband's side of the covenant. The covenant he will be taught between his family and God, the covenant between his wife and him, the covenant between the family and extended family and his family, the covenant between community, and he receives a blessing for all of those. Meanwhile, the bride is doing the exact same thing in her village with the women, the elders, who are testing her for all the different covenants that are almost exactly like the, the husband's. She's being dressed and blessed and washed and cleaned and, and the elder women will not let her loose until she passes all the tests. Meanwhile, the bride is waiting, thinking that the groom will come at any moment 
in an unexpected way at any hour, any day. We won't really know when that comes because we don't know how he's doing in school. So once she is retrieved, then a wedding feast begins. Remember for a moment in John chapter 2 where Jesus is at the wedding in Cana. Remember what happens? The wines run out, Jesus. Can you make some more wine so that the, the celebration can continue and continue? And what does Jesus do? He makes so much water into wine, such an, a huge bounty of water into wine, that that wedding feast can literally, in the text says, continue forever. That's the oil forever. That's the light forever. And the foolish virgins miss that. In the life that celebrates the oil, in the life that recognizes the light, there develops a relationship between the Lord and the person who receives the oil in the light. So the five are wise and the five are foolish and they're waiting. And Matthew continues in his gospel and he says the wise are the expectant ones, the ones that are anticipating like the little boy or girl at the circus announcement. They're the sensible ones. They have extra oil. They vested in it. They have maybe some sandwiches in case this takes a while. And the wise people are these people of faith who are wise in oil, that they're wise in the oil of grace and new life and forgiveness. And the oil represents these people who have vested in a relationship with their Lord. The wise are waiting for the bridegroom so that they can go into the marriage feast, as John says, which has no end with the Messiah. But then what about the five foolish? The answer to their lives comes in the last response that Jesus gives in the parable in the conversation between the bridegroom and these foolish ones. To lead up to that, we know that they're caught up in the moment, they slumber, they sleep, they assume that their life will continue like a river with no end, there will always be a tomorrow. They make no effort to deal with their terminal future, and they say, you know, we're lucky. Things always continue for us. There's always going to be tomorrow. And when the bridegroom arrives, the foolish ask to have some more oil. The wise say, the wise women say no. And the foolish girls who thought they had it all figured out and would just ride with their luck are left outside in the dark. And the bridegroom says to them these words, I never knew you. I never had relationship with you. I never knew you. I never understood how you thought oil worked or were willing to read the light to understand how the oil worked. I never knew you. So they're out in the cold, left outside the wedding feast. So in the context of the book of Matthew, we're really right at the end of the book now. It's only 28 chapters, we're in chapter 25. And as we move towards the end of the church year, which is just a few weeks now, and as we move to the end of Matthew, Matthew wants us to understand that we need to prepare our oil or how grace has covered our lives. We need to do that. And the, and the, the foolish virgins are on that proverbial road of good intentions. They think that good intentions will always lead to success. But we have a saying in our culture, you know where the good intentions lead you. Somehow, we have to get past just reassuring ourselves that there will always be a tomorrow. The sun will come up in the morning. Don't rush to judgment. We have to vest ourselves in the oil relationship, vest ourselves and prepare to light the lamps, the light of the world, the light of the world, the light of Jesus Christ. Life can't be endlessly deferred. We must have some investment in our future. St. Augustine writes about us in his book of confessions, book number eight. St. Augustine says this, you have made us for yourself, Lord. 
and our heart is restless till it rests in you. Sounds like oil. Our heart is restless till it rests in you with the knowledge of all your grace. Who will grant me to rest content in you, Lord? To whom shall I turn for the gift of your coming into my heart so that I may forget all the wrong I've done and embrace you alone, embrace your oil and light. You are my only grace. Jesus ends today's parable with an admonition to watch, to stay awake. The time is coming, it's closer than we think. Stay on your tiptoes like the little child waiting for the circus. It's okay to rush in. It's okay to be surprised. It's okay to be excited because the light and the oil are beautiful. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, our time seems so comforting. We do not know what tomorrow may hold, but we do know now, Lord, and we dearly cling to what we know. Lord, we read of heroes in other times and places. We have heard about moments of exciting and demanding spiritual elation, but those moments always seem to come to others, not to me. So we settle into the present. Lord, why should we stand on tiptoes, wishing and hoping for the great fulfillment when we don't see it ever coming? Lord, would you shatter our present complacency? Will you come among us with your power? Will you give us a future of oil and light that we have never imagined? Lord, gently shake us. Break open our consciousness so we can hear and see and know you. Lord, help us to know you. Amen. We turn back to our bulletin, if you have one, to page number five, to our hymn, Soon, Very Soon. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Janet. We continue with the Apostles' Creed, and after the Creed, we will uh, listen to the prayers prayed to us by the Roberts family. Let us confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, rouse us to deep praise as we gather for worship. Enliven our worship with sincere and heartfelt song. Sustain the work of all church musicians and artists who lead us in praise and prayer, especially those who have joined us today. Hear us, O God. Holy Creator, surprise and delight us with the beauty of the world you have made. Bless the work of landscapers, architects, and artists whose work invites us into harmonious living with your creation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy judge, let justice roll down like waters over this world. Reign over the courtrooms of every land in the hearts of those who guard the law and those who stand accused of crimes. Be present in cases where we long both for justice and mercy to prevail. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy companion, console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Share the hours of those who live and eat alone. Comfort those who have few friends or who struggle with their identity and place in this world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy Protector, be with all observing Veterans Day. Guard the life of active duty and retired military personnel. Comfort all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty. Heal the wounds, both, phys both physical and mental, experienced by service members. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy and immortal one, we pray in thanksgiving for the lives of all who have died. Remind us of the frailty and shortness of our own lives and inspire us to use them for the building up of your kingdom. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy your is mercy great. great. For whom and for what do the people pray, either aloud or in our hearts? For the healing of our nation. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, while you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray together. Our Father Lord, in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your, your will be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. Our offertory is the hymn, We Are an Offering. However, we'll, we'll speak it together. And it's a beautiful reminder that at this point in the worship service, we give our offering as a reminder of the gift of giving our entire self to our Lord. Let us begin. We are an offering. We lift our voices. We lift our hands. We lift our lives up to you. We are an offering. 
Lord, use our voices. Lord, use our hands. Lord, use our lives. They are yours. We are an offering. All that we have, all that we are, all that we hope to be, we give to you. We lift our voices. We lift our hands. We lift our lives up to you. We are an offering. We are an offering. Amen. Announcements this morning. If you have an announcement, uh, please uh, give us a wave and we'll get your voice on and so you can give us your announcement. As people are assembling to give their announcements, I wanted to ask Rob uh, if you have any report to share with us about our friend Hillman. Um, yes, I, I do actually. Um, Hillman uh, found out a few weeks ago that he was that his appeal for asylum in the United States was denied. Um, so he's not sure what's next for him. Um, he's going to look into the possibility of trying to go somewhere else, like maybe Canada. Um, but that he can't do that until January because or at the earliest because Canada will be revised, hopefully revising their asylum rules to allow for that to happen. Um, but that wouldn't be until January. So he's kind of in a holding pattern. He's doing fine. He is very cold. <laughs> he says <laughs> we got him some warm clothes and stuff. People have been very uh, helpful and generous and making sure that he's outfitted, you know, with the appropriate things for a very non Cameroonian winter. Um, and uh, he's got some work things that he's doing. So, I mean, he's in good shape, except the broader picture, which is that he doesn't know where he's going to be able to, to land in a secure, permanent way. So please keep him in your prayers. Um, for Rob, on, Rob on, a, on a slightly humorous note, uh, yesterday in the New York Times, there was an op-ed piece by a Yorkshireman from Northern uh, England who was encouraging us not to radically social distance during this winter. If we've been meeting others outside, continue to meet others outside. Um, he says, uh, we, we British do that all the time. There's no such thing as bad weather. There's only inappropriate clothing. <laughs> That's good. I wanted to, Rob, you need to connect Hillman with Kim Campbell. She's got an extra chair at her stove. Right. Yeah, exactly. Just get on in there. <laughs> all right. Yeah, we are. I'm actually in my, uh, I need to, I don't know if Barb Kirchmeier's on, but I need to thank her because um, she rescued a good friend of ours last night who showed up at her door and uh, we, we took him down to the hospital and he's doing much, much better this morning. But I'm currently uh, scooping out my son's bedroom to hopefully house him for a few days. So you could just kind of join the party, I guess. <laughs> Thanks, Barb. Sure, Kim, he's doing better today. Is he going to come home? Yeah, I'm hoping oh, he, he, they let him out today. But um, it turns out he didn't have COVID. He just has a very, very bad, um, you know, respiratory infection. So thank you so much. For of, all course. Your of course. Of uh, course. Deb, did you have your arm up? I did. Um, so I, I just wanted to make an announcement and let everyone know that we're going to try and do an annual meeting on Zoom on December 6th. So mark your calendars and um, try to be on Zoom that day. We'll do it after the service. Um, what we hope to do is go over the budget for next year. You know, we just um, lay out what we have planned for the budget and get comments. And then um, we hope to elect some council members as well. So if you're interested in being on council, the nomination committee is Lisa Bender, Kathy Kwiatkowski and Ben Beard. So please feel free to contact them or you can contact me too if you're interested. Um, and, um, you know, it'll, it'll be difficult, but I'm, you know, I'm sure you, you guys will give an extra prayer for patience that day and <laughs> we, we will do the best we can and hopefully we'll be able to hear um, everybody's voice, even though it's in a different format, but um, it seemed to be the best way to go about it this year. So um, December 6th. Thanks. Um, Monica. Yeah, so just, just to follow up with uh, Deb on that, um, 
so with with having that uh, you know meeting on the December sixth, it'd be nice to have an annual report to give you guys a couple weeks before that, so you guys can see you know some hard evidence, you know just a hard copy of what we've done this year, as well as the budget and everything else, and also you know. Um, who's been nominated for council, all that stuff's in that annual report. So if you have anything you want to, to submit, so it's in that, go ahead and just email the office or you can come by and drop it in my mailbox at the door or when I'm there, you can just hand it over. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. yeah I have a couple of announcements. Um, first, the question, Monica can I ask, did, did we receive any more um, a mission endowment uh, funding request? We have, I think I have four more for you, Walter. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll, come, I'll come in and let me, I think we should extend the deadline till next week <laughs> because of this last week, I'm sure everyone has been caught up in the political uh, turmoil and issues. And, um, but we do need to, we do want to, uh, I think, make, bring this to a, a resolution. And, and so again, if you, have a local or international or regional uh, charity you would like to apply for. Um, I'll, I'll come into the office this week and maybe we can get out a list of, of applications that we've received and so that uh, we don't know where we are. And, and if you again have, have something else and you know, if you're involved in some other organization that um, could use our support um, that will we sure. can make, uh, Thanks, make well, that sure. request happen. And the second one, I want, by the end of the week, we should have uh, so card supplies and instructions in the office um, for making our, our Christmas greeting cards again for those in immigration and refugee centers. We did this last year. Uh, I think we had a good time. And I think we've Several of us have talked about uh, having some supplies available in the office to pick up, and maybe we'll we'll make the due date for this the same day as the uh, as the meeting annual meeting December sixth. We do need to get the cards in so that we can get them. Uh, well, we send them to Lutheran World Relief um, in Baltimore, and then they distribute them to the uh, people in in the refugee centers. So I hope hope everyone will consider making a card. It's a lot of fun. Again, there'll be instructions and greetings to say in Spanish and in English. Um, so we can try to get a good collection and we'll gather those together and mail them. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Walter. Yeah. I also wanted to, to lay this out there for the entire congregation. This is an odd Thanksgiving that's coming up for a lot of us uh, will be isolated. And if you're alone, good news is that we have some folks off the church council and other places in our congregation who have volunteered to share a Thanksgiving meal with you. Mm. They'll bring it to your home. It'll be prepared with high quality cooks. Uh, I'm trying to word this uh, to say that, you know, it's all sterile. It's all going to be really appropriate. And uh, these families have offered to share a uh, Thanksgiving meal with you by bringing it to your home. And so if that's something that, that you could use, that little bit of friendliness and love, please call the church office and we'll get it all together for you. All right. Any other announcements today? All right. I have yes, one, Pastor. Hand up. There you go. Oh, it's Ben. Hi, Ben. Hey, yeah, Ben Kirchmeyer. Um, so, um, while we've been uh, away, um, the, the handbell choir is planning to perform next week. So I just wanted to give a quick shout out to the handbell choir. Uh, we, we will be around, so please join us on Zoom next week um, for a performance. Thanks. Be great. Thanks, Rob. Thanks. Thank you to all the worship leaders today. You make the community worship fellowship so much more meaningful with your voices and your inflections and your reading styles. It just makes it wonderful. Thank you so much. June, I need you to read for me. You have one of the prettiest reading voices. Think about it. Okay. I have a, a quick question for Janet real quick. Can I do a little thing right after the postlude? There's a song that is perfect for today and I didn't realize it until the middle of the service. I just want to like 
share that with everyone to be over exuberant. Anyway, is that okay? That's great. That's great, Rob. We don't have okay. a post loop, so whenever everything's done, go for it. Oh, you don't have a post loop? Is that what you just said? Okay, Rob, oh. I'm going to give the benediction and then you and Janet take it away. All right. <laughs> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor, his grace, his oil, his light, and give you his peace. Amen. I have some words it, that I posted in the chat. It's a gospel song uh, that I just feels timely to me because of the message today and um, anyway, for other reasons in my life too. The thunder and lightning gave voice to the night. The little lame child cried aloud in her fright. Hush, little baby, a story I'll tell of love that has vanquished the powers of hell. Hallelujah, the great storm is over. Lift up your wings and fly. Hallelujah, the great storm is over. Lift up your wings and fly. Sweetness in the air and justice on the wind. Laughter in the house where the mourners have been. The deaf shall have music, the blind have new eyes. The standards of death taken down by surprise. Hallelujah, the great storm is over. Lift up your wings and fly. Hallelujah, the great storm is over. Lift up your wings and fly. Hush, little baby, let go of your fears. The Lord loves his own and your mother is near. The child fell asleep as the lantern did burn. Her mother sang on till her bridegroom's return. Hallelujah, the great storm is over. Lift up your wings and fly. Hallelujah, the great storm is over. Lift up your wings and fly. Hallelujah, the great storm is over. Lift up your wings and fly. That's by Bob Frankie. Thank you. That was great. I loved it. Thank you, Rob. That was wonderful. <laughs>